from God to the sky. You can't bear to see a goddess sleeping with a man, even if she lives in the middle of the ocean and has no one else for company. You're pretty slick yourself with those early girls when it comes to us. Excuse me? So now you grudge me too, my little friend? But it was I who saved him. When all of his troops were lost, his good companions, I fed him, loved him, and sang that he should never die in a little old, ever in the days to come. But now there's no living to his will if he insists. He does insist. But surely I cannot send him. I have no on board ships. No company to pull him on the bed back at sea. I live in a room. He used to build his own ship, but here's the help. All right. I'll let him go. I'll help him build the ship. Go on, get out of here. You've given me my message. Go on. Show more places to obedience, or next time, the gods might get annoyed and punish you. Farewell, little giant slayer. Unhappy friend. Come here. Calypso, please. It is not for the Odysseus. I do not want anything from you. Odysseus, your unhappiness has just ended. You're going home. Don't tease me, sweet Calypso. You're going home. No need to grieve. No need to feel your life being turned here. I have pardoned it, and I shall help you go. Come and cut down my timber for a raft, so you can ride her on the misty sea. Come, and I'll help you. Oh, goddess, after all these years, a help again? Look, Guile is hidden here. A raft of sand across the western ocean. Well, far is unknown. See one of these ships that with glory and God's wind will never cross it. I take no raft and grudge about to sea, but first you must give me one great oath to work no more enchantment to my heart. What dog you are to think of such a thing? Come to see us. My heart is not as a stone. For seventeen nights and days, Odysseus sailed the open sea without incident. But on the eighteenth, the dark shore in Aphasia appeared. Poseidon, storming home, saw him and grew sullen and said, Ah, oh, here is a pretty cruise. So, all I had to do was go to Ethiopia for the gods to change their minds, eh? Well, I can still give him a rough ride in. <laughs> the sky began to rain and began to rain. Always in trouble, Odysseus, wherever you may go. <laughs> Sleep well, Odysseus. You are safe ashore. Men who drowse all day upon that flower. They have no will to do a person harm, 
But anybody who takes that honey plant will forget mother, child, and home and wish to stay forever. Not knowing this, I sent my men to explore, and soon enough, there they fell in love with the load of cedars. I drove these men wailing back to the ships, and I crawled up, called out to the rest, all hands on board, come clear the beach. Found them to the place where the roll dogs. They dipped their long oars into the surf, and we went out again. Is someone trying to kill you? 
Is somebody trying to ruin you or steal your sheep? Nobody's! Nobody's ruined me! Nobody's killed me! <laughs> oh, well, if no one has played you foul there in your lonely bed, you must be sick. Sick sickness comes from Zeus and can't be helped. But nobody... Pray to your father, sire. Pray. Odysseus laughed at how, like a charm, the trick had worked. Captain, what now? We can't repress him. What? You think this idiot can defeat me? I have another trick up my sleeve. <laughs> Odysseus took the sheep from their pens and tied them together in groups of three. Underneath each group, each group, he secured a man. <laughs> Come, sheep. It's time for you to graze in the pasture. Blinded, sick of pain, the master stroked each fleecy back and let it pass. She never felt the men below, for their fingers twirled deep in the sheepskin ringlets for an iron grip. Two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, five sheep. Last of all, my ram, weighed down with heavy wool and me with my meditations. Mm, sweet cousin Ram, why do you lag so behind the rest? Usually, you are the first to go out and graze on the pastures. Could you be mourning your master's eye? Oh, nobody! How he took it from me! How he stabbed my great eye! We took the Cyclops' precious sheep down to the boats and loaded them up. I shouted to my adversary. Cyclops, would you feast on my men? Nobody? Nobody? Puny am I in a caveman's hands? Captain, why bait the beast again? Let him alone. Go bash our timbers and our heads together. But in my glorying spirit, I would not heed them. I let my anger flare and shouted, Cyclops, if anybody asks who put you to shame and took out your eye, tell them that Odysseus, raider of cities, whose home is on Ithaca and father is Laertes, took out your eye. Odysseus, it was told to me in a dream that one day Odysseus would come and take my great eye. But I had always thought it would be a great warrior with a great army. But you, you small, tiny, twiggy, oh, Father Poseidon, might you grant that Odysseus never sees his home? But if fate has it that he may see his homeland again, let it be under strange sail, with many dark years in between, and let him lose all companions. And the god heard him. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I did this. 
What bag you did, Odysseus? What steam found was in your path? Did we set you well for home, or whatever land you chose? It was my rascally crew. And a fatal nap. Make good my loss, my dear friend. Get out! You're not welcome here, Odysseus. Your voice is cursed by heaven. Out! With that, you chased us from the place, grown as I would, and out to sea again. We went without a wind to help us on our way.
Woe to the innocent who hears that sound. He will never see his homeland or lady again. How may I avoid these? Plug up your ears and have your men tie you to the mast. Shout as you will to be untied, they must only twist more line around you until the singer's whistle is paid. What then? One of two paths you must take, and you yourself must weigh them. <coughs> One is Scylla, the sea monster. She has six heads and twelve arms. She takes from every ship passing by one man for each mouth. The other is Charybdis, her sister. She is a whirlpool, and she can take your whole ship down. How may I avoid the whirlpool of Charybdis while fighting off the sea monster of Scylla? There is no fighting her. But God is her. Enough. <laughs> they straight for the ship and roused the bait. They scrambled to their place by the rowlocks. We, we pulled away from Circe's island, but soon enough, the wind, <coughs> wind fell in a calm over all the sea. Plug up your ears and tie me down. The sirens have begun.
himself has directed us how we should kill the suitors. Father, all my life I have heard of you as being a, a fine man, but what you're speaking of now is a staggering thing beyond imagining. How can we defeat a whole house of men in their prime? It is true, we only have two allies, but their names are Zeus and Athena. You must go home at daylight and mingle with our princess. The swine herd here will bring, a, bring me a beggar by my looks. If they insult me or injure me, do nothing. Just let your ribs cage up your spreading heart. Then, at night, gather the arms and take them out of the hall so that the, the suitors will have none. Now, one more thing. If you are my son in flesh and blood, tell no one this. Not your Clea, not Penelope, not even Larry's.
knew I waited. You heard me say it. Waiting to see this man and question him about my lord? Go on with you. I'll sit back. Please bring a rug here for our guest. I wish to have his whole story. Sir, do you tell fortunes? I do not have that talent. Do you tell lies? If I have it once in my life, I have not now. Would I offend you if I make so bold as to ask you directly who you are and where you come from? What city and what parents were you born? Never a fault would be found in you, but such sort of subjects are sore to me, and I, it would not be good for me to be found in tears in another's house. Stranger, as to your praise of me, my looks, my face, my carriage, were destroyed when my husband crossed the sea to joy. If he were here to care for me, I might be what you claim, but heaven sent me grief instead. These suitors that roam the halls, consume this house, all the while pressing me to marry. How have you kept them off? <coughs> I had the happy chance of spinning a close green web on my big room in the hall. So every day I would leave a moment. But every night by torchlight I would unleave it. But one day one of my maids caught on to me. And I was forced to finish it. I had to get married. My parents urged it upon me. But sir, confide in me. Tell me your ancestry. You weren't born out of an oak or a stone. Will you not be satisfied until I give you my pedigree? No. Well then, off the mainland, in the wide dark sea, is an island called Crete. As the night wore on, the stranger spoke of far off lands and the stores, storms that brought him low, and finally of Odysseus. I saw him in his bed at Narsus. If you saw him, give me some proof. It was so long ago. Give me some particular. He wore a brooch with a hunting dog in it. And they fawn on it, the spotted fawn, but it was gold and nothing more. With my own hands, I pin that brooch on him. But now, I suppose, it lies beneath the sea. It may, it may, but he holds its image in his mind if it does. But I have heard of the Thesprotians, that he's with the Thesprotians gathering the fortune, that he's going to bring it home and kill all the suitors. I do not believe it so. Ah, stranger, if what you say could ever happen. But my heart tells me what must be. My Lord will not come home to me, nor will a ship be prepared for you. We have no, we have no master, but to receive the branch that I guess is what Odysseus was. But come for it. I will have Euryclea prepare a bath for you. Okay. Euryclea, please prepare a bath for our friend. Queen Penelope, Icario daughter, Icario's daughter, is me. So let me serve you to serve my queen also. I must tell you, my heart within me stirs. Strangers have come, but never so like Odysseus as you. Those who have seen us think that we are so alike, those who have seen us both. Odysseus, watch out! The scar, your scar! What's this? Nurse, would you destroy me? Nurse or not, I will kill you if you tell anyone. Child, who do you think you're talking to? I'll be as silent as a stone. Now quiet, before she notices. Stranger, I know the time for sleep is coming soon. But let me ask you this. You seem so wise. Shall I stay beside my son and honor my lord's bed? Or had I best join fortunes with the suitor? Is it time for that? Dear lady. No, here's what I will do. Tomorrow, I will decree a contest for the day. I will line up 12 axe heads and have them shoot through them with my lord's bow. The one who does that is the one I will marry. An excellent plan. Let it be so.
control a fit of laughter. <laughs> they laughed with jaws that were no longer theirs. Their blood splattered their meat, and their eyes were flooded with blurry tears. <laughs>
It is true, true as I tell you. Dear nurse, dear nurse, listen to me. If Odysseus did come in secret, how could he engage them single handed? They were all down there, everyone. I didn't see it. I only heard the groans of dying men. <laughs>